If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, yeah! the introductory portion of the podcast was about 35 minutes long. Here's what we talked about. We talked about the growth of podcasts, our new butt cleaning bidets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so can't cool. wait to set mine up. Sparkly taints. Justin eats his own tooth. It's a new, <laughs> it's a new diet. Whoops. I mentioned. <laughs> I four, found it later in my shit. I mentioned the four sigmatic uh, mushroom matcha with lion's mane. I'm on fire. Uh, if you go to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump, enter the code mind pump, you will get a discount. Actually smells all right. We talk about putting kids in a bubble to keep them safe. Oh, trigger, trigger warning. Bubble Fast boy. food and infertility. They actually did a study showing that women can double the risk of infertility if they eat a lot of Fast infertility? food infertility. It's when you're infertile. Dilly dilly. Yeah. And we talked about the Big Mac guy and the last time we ate a Big Mac. Who do you think is the last person in this room who ate a Big Mac? Mm. If you're guessing Adam, you're right. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, this person loves the ketogenic diet for mental health uh, and, and for longevity, but they're also a physique competitor and uh, wants to know if it's possible to perform and grow muscle while on keto. So we have a little keto discussion on that one. Next question was, what is the difference between, or what are the differences with weighted hip thrust in developing all three parts of the glutes? You might not know this, but your butt is made up of three separate uh, members, just like Mind Pump. Yeah. We're just one big butt. Yeah. <laughs> We're the ass of podcasting. <laughs> We're the ass of podcasting. The best well, part. I'm glad you finally put that together. Yep. Uh, this The next question was, this person's about to turn 30, wants to know if we have any advice for them. Well, since they're already listening to Mind Pump, I think they've got it all down. Yeah. And finally, what's the best way to back out of endurance training without gaining a ton of weight? We lay out a strategy Run backwards. for this individual. Also, this month, get the fasting guide and the nutrition guide for free if you enroll in any MAPS bundle. Now, MAPS bundles are where we take multiple MAPS programs, put them together, and discount them like 20 or 30% off. Here's a quick rundown of the MAPS programs. If you're interested in maximum muscle size, strength, or metabolism boosting, try MAPS Anabolic. If you're a stage competitor, like a physique competitor, bikini competitor, or bodybuilder, or you just want to sculpt your physique and you're at a moderate to advanced level already, that's MAPS Aesthetic. If you want functional athletic performance, if you want to move like a master athlete, well, that's MAPS Performance. If you like to work out at home or on the road, or you just like to work out without exercise equipment, just your body, well, that's MAPS Anywhere. And if you're a personal trainer, or if you want to train your body to operate better so you don't have pain, that's MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro. Now, you can find all those programs plus the bundles where you get the free nutrition guide and fasting guide at mindpumpmedia.com. You see my post on Justin the Oscar Mayer Wiener? Oh, bro, you're ripping Justin lately. All yeah, right, he's coming, just, coming hot. That's a you're good, crushing it. That yeah. is literally, <laughs> literally what's going through his head sometimes when I know we're rambling and talking. He's, <laughs> he's, got, he's got old like '80s jingles going in his head. I it's, thought, it's, it's very accurate. I so. thought I, so. I, could, I thought it was too. I thought it wasn't like I a, couldn't get mad at it. I'm, waiting, a, for, it, I'm waiting for the retaliation. It wasn't a full. It wasn't a flattering picture though. I was like, I'm not using that shit. Oh, I thought Adam uses it right away. Like, oh yeah, it's perfect, perfect. You know. Well, the one of me like, like uh, mode. spooning a pillow isn't the best either. <laughs> Katrina, Katrina got it. She goes, you know, I'm sending these over to Kyle. Do you really want this picture of you spooning a fucking pillow? Hey. I'm like, the dude's wearing a fucking pink Relax. unicorn shirt. He's wearing a pink unicorn shirt. I'm not hey, worried about me spooning that's, a pillow. Hey, we just pillow. talked about this in the last episode. Fine. Confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Fuck. I'm comfortable. Oh, I yeah, yeah, let I'm comfortable. it fly, man. Hey, I like it when you lay sideways like that because you have your legs kind of together. That's what she's making fun of. Yeah. <laughs> She's like you're playing with your feet. You yeah. look all. Yeah. She's like, like, like give you a little poke. poke. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so uh, right in the tush. <coughs> article hey. came out. Apple's podcast just topped uh, 50 billion all time downloads and streams. In their podcast, their iTunes. Or yeah. Whatever? So uh, they're streaming. Oh yeah. They just hit wow. 50 billion total streams. So here's some stats for you guys. Those that are uh, damn. Entrepreneur. That's a lot of listens. Right. So um, here's here's the uh, how much it's grown. In 2014, there were seven billion podcast downloads in 2014 2016 that number jumped to 10.5 billion downloads 
In 2017, it jumped to 13.7 billion uh, episode downloads and streams across podcasts and iTunes. And then in March 2018, Apple Podcasts passed 50 billion all time. It went from 13 wow, to 50. It's exploding. 13 to 50. Crazy, exploding. right? Exploding. What? Yeah. Crazy, right? We're we, rich. It's like we felt it, but we're rich. We're rich. I wish, I wish it went that way. <laughs> well, you know what? We said this from early on like, just hang on. As uh, long as we don't suck and we, we like our, our, we just kind of hang on, we'll just right. rise. Imagine if we got worse. Yeah. Like, let's we, we were not trying imagine, really let's hard. Let's not imagine like, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That Damn it, suck. Justin. You got to shit on everything. Yeah, I'm right? just saying. I'm just hey, saying. Let's I, not do that. Speaking of shit, okay, did yeah. anybody install the, the fucking bidet? I haven't yet. Oh, can we give a shout out to our boy? <sighs> Bro, what's his name? Is I that left his name mine right here at the studio. I can't wait to use it. What's Desmond's last name? Smith. Smith. Is it? Oh, I should have remembered. Desmond that. Smith, real, real tough last name. Can I tell yeah. you something? Yeah. First real of all, uncommon. you're the man. So I need to know the brand of this bidet because I want to shout it out. So easy. I installed it in my house. Right when I got home, took me five minutes. Listen, if I can do it, wait, 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 wait. anybody could do it. Walk me through it because uh, obviously water comes through that. It, Where do you attach it to? So you you take off your toilet seat, which is easy. There's two screws in the back. Right. You put the device on top uh, on top of your toilet. Then you put the seat over it. So now it's secured, mm-hmm. and you have this little little uh, like control thing next to you right the the there's a an, uh they give you an adapter that you attach the tube that already goes to your toilet mm-hmm. you attach to this adapter and then you attach that to the toilet and then the adapter has another another female part coming out so then you attach another the other uh, what tools were necessary to, to do this? Don't, don't no you tools uh, you all by hand uh just a screwdriver that's it oh a screwdriver For my, because i had to take off the the, the toilet seat that's yeah. it it's lux lux bidet is that the one we got? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Lux Bidet Neo. Oh, wow. So how does it work? Do you like it? You sit down. Now- And when you're ready, you fucking spray your butthole. And and let me tell you, this is the first time I've ever used one. Oh, like, it is. So like, you don't know what it's like. So here's what- my- Oh, it hit direct. It went straight <laughs> in the butthole. Straight up. <laughs> it's like, and, and go mild. Because you can shoot that wow. fucker hard. Yeah. And I did the first level. It's like anima. Any status. harder than, and I would have, it would have been bad. I would have so had now the an one, additional So now the one thing hole. about these, which I'm curious to what it feels like and how cold it is on your butt. So the ones that you, when you, you install them, they have a hot and a cold. No, this is the, so you, get just, a, you get a nice warm, you know, mm, butt liquid. Yeah, I like cold because after I'm done going to the bathroom, it's, it's already, liquid guys. It's already hot in your butt. It's, yeah. it's already There's hot. a little smoke coming off of it. <laughs> yeah. You don't have yeah. to. You, after you cook your eggs at the pan and you put water on. The it's pan. not like so cold where it's like ah. <laughs> it's <laughs> not like crazy cold. Cool. It's yeah. it's cold. Is it? It's cool. Uh, but I don't, this is so great. Like I, I. So now we have one toilet with a bidet in my house, and it's in my my room, and that's the only toilet I poop in now. So now I go upstairs. Everybody's like, why are you going it upstairs? It literally makes so much sense. I, I'm surprised it's taken this long t- for America to get behind Bro, it. you save on toilet paper, too, because you, you spray your butt with the water. Yeah. And then you turn it off, and then you use one. You only have to wipe once to dry. Mm. Now, if you really want to be environmentally friendly, you just you just sit there till it dries. But yeah, I, don't, dry. I don't have enough Drip time. Drip dry. Yeah, yeah. I've already spent 30 minutes Drip dry. going through Instagram. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, you didn't read my, you didn't do my Insta story? I did. It's really hard to catch. I didn't even catch. I didn't catch it. Obviously, I know how to spell downloaded, but uh, the uh, D- Don Warded is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it's a D O N. It's like the, uh, the W and the yeah. N are flip flop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, oh, that t- was, anyways. That's, I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic, bro. I'm, no, you may be. I'm pretty sure. That stood out right you are very me. intelligent, and you, very creative. You know what's weird is I'll I'll look at that. It's not like I don't like because I know I do it so often. I try and be conscious of like. I know when I'm being lazy and I just rip shit out fast and it's like, whatever, I don't give a shit what people yeah. say. And then there's times where I'm like, I was trying to put a nice little story together there. Mm-hmm. You know, like, dink, dink, nice one. And mm-hmm. I look at it before, thought I spell checked it real quick. <laughs> 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 then Justin fucking jabs me right after yeah. afterwards. Well, yeah. well, have you... You got me on the couch. Just so. wait till you, you get to just wait till you get spell checked by your own kid. That's always fun. Oh, man. Happened to me. My kid corrects me are every ki- day. Now, are you guys' kids at an age where they are uh, like learning stuff that's like already above your guys' level? My son. Wow. My son's in seventh. He's Not only in yet. seventh grade, too, but he's such a whiz at math mm. that he he takes math at very advanced levels, and math also happens to be my weakness. Oh, no. That's like my kryptonite. Yeah. So for sure, he's never asking dad for help. For yeah. sure. I, and thank God he's good at it. He doesn't ever ask for help. But if there's ever a situation where he's like, hey, dad, can you help me with my math homework? I'm just going to be like, dude, listen, call Uncle son. Adam. My son's yeah. eight, but it's happening quickly. Is it really? Yeah, 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 because he already remembers things I don't. You know, like things that literally happened, you know, like a couple of months ago. And he remembers 
uh, to the, to the T like describes everything. And I'm like, no, that didn't happen. And then like, yeah, Courtney will be like, yeah, yeah, no, that happened. He's like, and he's always super accurate. Like he has like the best memory. Oh, can we just, uh, can we take a moment uh, and point out Justin's, uh, shoe game today? Yeah. What's going on there? I, Boom. I like the camo SBs, bro. I'm a huge, uh, SB fan. In fact, You've now motivated me to bring them back in the rotation. So I was on a kick yeah. for about I don't know a year or two there, where that's all I wore was the low top, high top. They SBs. go, they go nice with the sweat shorts. Yeah, they do. <laughs> See, I still have a little bit of my own flavor to it, but you know, I feel like I don't know, just being around you guys, and maybe it's maybe it's it's definitely Adam's influence it's and, and so Taylor. My, what's my it's influence? My influence I, was, I was looking at you and I was like trying to come up with something. I was like, no, no, no it's definitely Adam yeah. and Taylor. What, what's my influence? The sweat shorts? Or you're like, eh, I'm never going to look as bad. Been as there. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> if, can you guys start wearing wife beaters? No, forget it. You know it's what? You're right. That Honestly, though, I, I, I am a little inspired to, to Dude, start rocking that Let me tell you something shade. right now. Nothing makes you feel more you secure. You rock the fuck out of those. Nothing makes you more secure feeling in yeah. your body than when you have a tight, snug <laughs> wife beater on underneath your shirt. It's like those, it's hugging you it's like, like the some thund- creature that's going to die. It's like a thunder vest for yeah, dogs. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say that. Yeah. Like, like a- I never bark because I have... <laughs> Because I have this on. Shit, that's where your confidence comes oh, from. Oh, it feels so Oh, my God. Hey, so when, nice. is your, when is your tooth get fixed? Oh, my God. <laughs> I just, I yes. didn't, you just started laughing. <laughs> I, just saw, I didn't realize it until like, you started laughing. Like, right like I look like Jewel, you know, like <laughs> before she got a fit, like, like the little corn tooth <laughs> in the corner that's like, <laughs> I think you should keep it like that. <laughs> I know. I, like it. It's still, I still have character now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, I got to tra- tell this story because I was... Yeah, where did it go, first I of all? Actually, like, well, so here's the thing. Um, I, I'm not, like, I went to my my dentist buddy who who set me up with these amazing teeth and, like, everything. I was so stoked because I finally got my permanence, and they're nice and smooth, and I'm like, oh, I love the feel of it. But one of the, um, the canines came a little bit chipped, and so he had to order another one to replace it. And so he's like, well, in the meantime, I can kind of file this down and stick this back in as a temporary and you can have it but just be very conscious that you know it's going to be a little bit loose if you chew anything like are you just you know like just be conscious of like eating on the other side of your mouth basically (laughs) and so you know me being the fucking bull in a china shop uh, yeah, you're fucking. You eat goes with and orders abandon. a goes and orders a ribeye steak. Probably, <laughs> dude. I had well, like the carne you asada. You know, I had carne asada. What at, are you thinking? And I was chewing my way through, and I'm having a conversation with my wife, and all of a sudden, um, I'm like, my tongue hits up in in the corner there, and I'm like, oh my god, there's there's a hole. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, and. This had happened earlier in that day. It had kind of fallen out, and I was like, "Oh no, I got to be really conscious of this." And I like shoved it back in real hard, and um, and so I was like eating and chewing, and, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's gone!" And then all of a sudden, panic. And I'm like, "Wait, I can't find it." And then I spit all my food out, and I'm like sifting through it. Oh, <laughs> so gross! And I'm sifting. I'm like, I was like panicking, you know, I'm like, "Oh shit," you know. And uh, you know, Courtney just like looks at me like ghosted, like in her face. She's like, "Oh my god," and. I, and I was like, I swallowed it. I fucking swallowed it. And I definitely swallowed it. And then I was like, okay, my first instinct is, well, maybe I can puke it up, right? Yeah. Maybe I can still, like, Br- you know, brilliant. get this, yeah, right? I went idea. to, and, <laughs> and so I went in, <laughs> into, the, into the bathroom and I'm like, you know, trying to make this work and I'm just cramping like crazy. Nothing's coming up. And I just, like, gave up. I was like, ah, fuck it. And uh, Did it come out so I waited until I pooped and I got it. Did and it come I put out? it back in. No. <laughs> um, no, I didn't do that. So I just, I just gave up on it, and I'm just rocking it till I get my. my so you haven't seen it tomorrow. pass out? Have you checked to see if it's passed? There's no, no checking in that mess. No, bro, I'm not gonna <laughs> sift through my shit. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. At I just it. let it go. I was like, you know what? I swallowed it like an asshole, and uh, I'm just gonna have to pay the price. So could, this weekend, I just looked like a he crazy could, hillbilly. You couldn't find a fluorescent light in that fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. It could be a piece of <laughs> fucking glowing kryptonite. Yeah, yeah. yeah like where is it? Like like a block it could have shot like out on the wall behind me. You wouldn't even yeah. know. Yeah. Like, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in there. There's leprechauns in there. Nobody knows. Oh, Nobody God. knows what's going on. Yeah. That's why I'm laughing so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Good t- man, this fucking, so. dude, this four sigmatic matcha lion's mane thing that they gave me. Yeah. 
That shit's fire, dude. You guys just should saw, try that. I, I just saw you got a box from the. <laughs> you, uh, they have to be the most judicious about sending us stuff, bro. <laughs> they, we get maybe like two things whenever they send us. Like all the, the rest of our sponsors. Yeah, the rest of our sponsors. So they it's send the only it. one that really uses it's Sal, so we're gonna give you two things. Yeah, well, we the rest of our sponsors. We have we have so much supplements, which I love that we can now we can provide them for other people. We give them away all the time. We do cool stuff with them. Never are, are short on it. Four Sigmatic, dude. They send us like they send us a single person's care package every time we get our monthly <laughs> yeah, shipment. Yeah, like, a little travel. Thank size. God, Sal's the one who uses it the most, and I don't really give two shits. But what is this new stuff? This is the mushroom matcha drink <laughs> mix. So it's got matcha in there, which is a type of green tea. So when they grow green tea, if some of the leaves grow in shady areas, they grow with a higher concentration of uh, of, of antioxidants. Uh, I think the caffeine in matcha is similar, higher in theanine, and so they they call it matcha because it's a special, it's this more expensive version of green tea. And, it, and the way they make it in in I know in Japan I think is they use the powder. So what they do is they take these leaves, they dry them, grind them up into a fine powder, and then you make that into a paste, and then you can make that into a, a drink. So you're actually drinking like green tea powder, and I love it. I've always loved matcha tea. Uh, Doug, did you drink a lot of matcha when you were in Japan? Yeah, a fair amount. They had a whole process, right, where they would whisk it and... Yeah, there's actually a tea ceremony. It's very complex and involved. But, you know, the, the average person, uh, yeah, if you just drink matcha, you're just going to put some hot water and some matcha together and drink it. Yeah. Now, and how does it taste? This tastes like green tea. So it's got... Oh, really? Yeah, so it's got matcha in there and then lion's mane, which is that nootropic thing for the brain, and ginger, which I love taking ginger or turmeric with... Um, any type of a, a stimulant because of the, the it just can makes you feel I better. Smell it? I mean, yeah, yeah, it levels it out. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, man, it shit's got me on fire. Yeah, yeah. I got a funny story to tell you guys, by the way. Oh, please do. So I was up in the in the city visiting my brother. It does a couple, smell better. It smells good, huh? Yeah, it does smell yeah. better than their stuff. Yeah. So I, I I was up in the city a couple weekends ago. Remember when I was visiting my brother and his five million dollar? No, not really. But you know, he's spending like six grand on a two bedroom apartment. Right. Because San Francisco's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, we're up there and uh, we're, we we leave his apartment to go walking uh, around the town and we're gonna get some food. And there was this outdoor, like workout area, and they do yoga classes and Pilates classes and it, I, I I got to figure out where it was. It was pretty cool, right? So we're down there, we're walking around, and then they had these monkey bars that were for adults, and they would you would have to climb up and then climb down on the monkey bars. So it wasn't straight across. It was oh, yeah, I've seen those. going up mm -hmm. and then down. And and that's hard. Have you ever done that before? Yeah. So it's it's much more difficult to go upward when you're doing monkey bars and then going down. You gotta have a good grip, good strength. Right. So we're we're walking around, we see the monkey bars and you know, <laughs> Jessica's with me and she's all dressed up. You know, she's wearing heels and stuff because we're in the city and we're going to go out to dinner and, or lunch or whatever. And so she sees the monkey bar. She's like, oh, cool. And so she's, you know, she's fucking, my, my mom calls her the ant because she's small and strong like an ant. She's like, she's not very big. She's, you know, what is she, 5'1"? Yeah. But she's strong as shit. So she gets on these monkey bars and she's just, whoo, 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 and just, just jams across the whole thing, right? Now I know how difficult physical things are because I, I work out all the time. And I also know how strong she is, but I didn't say anything. So I look over and, and my brother and my cousins, because I was with two of my cousins, Gabriel, Alex, and then my brother. And they're all like, I'm like, dang, I'm like, that's pretty good, huh, guys? And they're like, yeah, she's she's pretty strong. And I'm like, I'm looking at them like, oh, you motherfuckers <laughs> think you could do that. Yeah, yeah, you do it. Yeah, so I said, oh, I said, you should you should give it a try to uh, my cousin Alex. He's such a dick. <laughs> yeah, you should give it a try. That's good, dude. So he's like, I, I could do that. So he gets up there and he goes, I think he makes it like three monkey bars. Like yeah. one, two, three, poof, he falls out. Right. Yeah. So I'm cracking up. So now my brother, who arguably my brother's extremely strong. Genetically speaking, he's stronger than I am. It's just I work out and he doesn't. But the kid's a strong kid. But he's also a big, heavy kid. He's like 220 pounds. Right. Not the best suit for that. No. So, and it's your, it's your hands. You know what I mean? So my brother jumps up and he's like, I'll do it. I'm like, all right, you should, yeah, give it a shot, dude. And my brother always has to, like, if it's a physical thing, yeah. he has to win, right? Right. So I'm watching him, and he's fucking just giving it everything just he can. Struggling. Oh man, he's like, Ugh! fucking couldn't make it, dude. Halfway down, I was laughing <laughs> so fucking hard, yeah, so hard, and I was making fun of. But then I'm like, look, she's super strong, and he's like, yeah, but she's really light. If I only weighed 120 yeah. pounds, <laughs> just flying it. Yeah, yeah, I could probably do it too. And I'm like, I could probably strap on a more weight on Jessica, and she could still probably do right. it. 
But I loved I loved shit like that. Oh god. Yeah, it's so funny. Humbling, right Humbling moment. Yes. Oh, the, <laughs> those are the best. It's one of my favorite things. I don't care when I see if I see a girl kick my ass, I think it's no, freaking No, just applaud it. You know oh, I, I think mean? it's like, awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Appreciate Absolutely love it. it. Anyway, I was going to ask you Justin some yeah. some advice earlier sure. in the earlier in the episode. I have a problem where if one of my kids, because right now my daughter's sick, she's home from school. Mm-hmm. I can't, I have such a tough time dealing with that shit. I get super paranoid. Do you get paranoid when your kids are sick or are you like, cool, like, okay, there oh, you go. Oh, yeah. No, I I struggle with the same thing because you know that you're not there to kind of help uh, manage the process <sighs> and like, you know, it's it's like out of your control, right? So, yeah, man, it's just, you got to hope that um, whoever is the caregiver at the time, you know, like you just, you kind of just check in, right, uh, throughout the day and just see how things are progressing and, and what's, what's happening. But yeah, it, that's a tough one, dude. The problem with me is that I'm su- I can be such a hypochondriac that yeah. my mind and I know a, a decent amount they're going to be okay. Yeah, that's I know yeah, that. Yeah. I know that logically, but you just have to tell yourself be- that because the symptoms that kids have, like oh, vomiting or fever or mm-hmm, whatever, mm-hmm. and it's like oh, what if my kid has leukemia or some shit? You know, I always go like to the worst places, yeah, and I freak myself out. No, <laughs> so it's so bad. It's dude. true, and I, I'm I'm actually thankful. It's terrible. Yeah. It's kind of a weird place because my wife's a nurse, and so it's like I I lean heavy on that fact alone. But there's been moments where you know she'll she'll lose sort of rational thinking, and then I have to kind of step in and be like, no, like this is this is just yeah, you know, it's just choking. We're gonna do this, and 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 just kind of be practical about it, or like we're gonna call, we're gonna take them to the ER or whatever. Where I have to like step in, and because it's it, it's crazy. Oh, like, she is when she, it's your own kid. Is she more likely to freak out than you are? I would think it would be you because I think she no. would be like she's seen all kinds of crazy shit. She'd be like, ah, they'll be fine. Yeah, just a little bit of dirt. Rub some dirt on it. <laughs> I think um, I, I think it's because she's exposed to the worst case scenarios yep, all the I would, time I would that, agree. that she she assumes the worst like kind of what sal's describing uh-huh. where i that's interesting i would have thought the other way i try to i try to come from the other angle where like maybe it's just this and we're just overreacting and we need to just be practical she's like the no the bird flu is going on right now these yeah. are the same symptoms right? get him to the hospital now yeah, exactly oh, like, wow, okay. or like you know, some like he's playing near the window, and like she's had cases where kids fall out of the window and are coming into the hospital, like all messed up. And I'm just like, you know, we'll just we're not gonna let them near the window. You know, it's like it's just like leaving them alone. They're not gonna like crawl out the window. Like, it's probably a unlikely situation, but it's it's stuff like that. Like, it, yeah, she sees the worst, and I'm always trying to kind of bring it back to like, well, that's that's very much of a a microcosm of what's going on. Like, there's there's people that. You know, it does happen, but it's it's less frequent than you think. You just see it all the time. Yeah, it's right. just it's it's just I always get fucking scared. I hate that. I hate that because they're kids. They're gonna get sick. They're gonna get hurt. Like the odds that yeah, everybody wants to put them in a bubble. You know what? Speaking of the bubble thing, you guys, mm. I didn't. I wanted to ask you because um, speaking of my bubble, yeah. <laughs> no, speaking of putting kids in a bubble oh, or protecting bad. them or cry closets. Which that conversation stirred up quite the fuss on our forum. I meant to ask you what. Yeah, you- it did because it was an art installation. An art project, and people right? thought we were being yeah. harsh on the you know the younger generation and this and that. But I mean, it's it's yes, we are being harsh, but there is a reality that that we tend to wrap kids. In. Life is fucking harsh. Well, yeah, yeah. Come I, on. I think I don't know. Like a, it, we it's that struggle. It's the same thing we're kind of describing with like the sick. You get, they have to go through that process of having a fever and they have to, you have to give them um, the amount of time to, to be able to fight and, and build up their immune system towards things. And that's a hard thing to, when it's your own kid, like to watch them go through that and like, or if you see any signs of like suffering or you want to like, when did we give them something? When did right? we decide that adversity and struggle was a bad thing? Mm. Well, when did this happen? When you know it, what it when is? When did it happen that struggle, hard times, adversity was such a bad thing? It, it's. I think it's always been a bad thing. I think in the past it was just you had there was nothing you could do about it. Like, you know what I mean? Like your your dad's working. You know, there's five kids in the family. Mom, you know, things are super physical even at home. Uh, we don't have you know all these luxuries, and so we don't have technology that keeps you connected and tethered to your kid all the time. And so it was just the reality of mm-hmm. life that, that that and so once we got to the point where we could try to eliminate more and more struggle. That's the we, thing. Yeah, we would do more because here's the deal. Here's the problem, Adam. Like when I'm in pain, when I'm sick, when I'm doing something and it's and it's challenging, as an adult, I can logically think to myself, like, okay, it's supposed to be challenging, it's supposed to be hard. I get this, this is part of growth. 
when you have a kid and you see your kid in pain, it's just it's fucking weird, man. It's hard. Like you just don't want to have them in pain. Well, you know what I'll, I mean? You I'll wish you could you snap example. your fingers. I'll give you an example. I saw and this is not to like roll this parent under the a bus or anything, but I saw a kid that But you're gonna do it anyways. Well, I'm not gonna name names, but <laughs> but so this kid like basically fell, scraped their knee, like, you know, had had some blood and just basically what kids do, right? Like it's in pain, crying, screaming, whatever. So the the parent not only just like coddles the kid like crazy, but now gets ibuprofen and feeds them ibuprofen like immediately. For a scraped knee? For a scraped knee. Ibuprofen? Right? Never. It's, I've never I, never, I I was appalled wow. by by what I saw with that, but at the same time it kind of highlighted a lot of what I see with I don't know the the current state of like everybody's mentality towards um you know just just struggle and and um I feel like I think that's why we kind of voice against things like the cry closet and like these sort of um things that are emerging it's as parents we want to set our kids up to be able to overcome their own um you, you know their own their own challenges their own obstacles which in their are going to happen that's what strength is yeah. strength is being able to you know get through all these things that come at them in life. And if I'm not setting them up for giving them the proper tools of how to find that within themselves, I'm not doing my job as a parent. Totally. I have a, here's a great, here's a great analogy because we, we talk about obviously fitness most of the time. If there was a way that somebody could get all the benefits of fitness, the strength, the fat loss, the mobility, the health, uh, you know, all the physical benefits from fitness, without having to work out, put hard work in, sweat, you know, feel their body get sore, all that stuff, would they be getting the same benefits? Hmm. Think about that, right? No. They would only be getting the the, the physical benefits, mm -hmm. but what about the other benefits you get through training? Like, there's so many benefits I get from the pain yep. of fitness, from the sacrifice of fitness, from the, the Teaching yourself part. discipline and consistency. Yeah. And all, that's what, there's so many lessons in that. That's what I'm saying. Like, we, we think that these things are such a positive thing, but why isn't anybody looking at the negative side of it? Like you're weakening you're weakening that kid. You're weakening that person by doing that. It's real easy to say as a parent, I want to coddle, I want to help them, or I want to build a cry closet so when finals get so so tough, they have a place they can go cry. But okay, I get that. I get that you have a place and it supports you, but then do you get what that also could be setting you, setting you up for in life? Mm -hmm. Because if you think fucking finals for school is the hardest thing you're going to face, yeah. you know, in real life. New, newsflash. You're in for a fucking rude awakening when you get out there. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, I think what's great about college and the struggle and those ty those types of hard, stressful moments is it's preparing you for even more that's going to happen in, oh, later yeah. on in life in shittier times. You know, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with Come sports. On. I mean, we're, that's, that's why you need to lose. You need to get your ass kicked in sports. Like you got to understand it, it's, at least the environment is controlled environment, right? Mm -hmm. So that way when you face things in real life that you don't know the outcome, you don't know um, where this is even coming from, it just hits you from left field all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get up and react? That's how right. are you going to keep keep on keeping on? You know, yeah. you have to learn how to do that. Keep on keep keep that on keeping on. That might have been sung one day. Maybe. So uh, another interesting statistic from a study Check this out. A study, a study examining 5,000 women, so it was a decent sample size, found that women who ate fast food four times a week or more, you ready for this? Yeah. Doubled the risk of infertility. Hmm. Infertility. Wow. So women who ate fast food a lot, and which obviously is probably not the fast food, it's just the fact that they probably are unhealthy in general, right? Mm -hmm. Doubled the risk of infertility. And there's a bit of an infertility issue that seems to be going on right now uh, with people. Part of it is I think people are having kids a little later in mm -hmm. life, but I also think part of it is sperm counts are dropping and uh, women uh, are having uh, issues with fertility and it might be due to the fact that they've been on birth control <clears throat> for long periods of time, but also because they're 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 not as healthy. Did you yeah. see what hit the news? Crazy, right? It's so I crazy mean, you bring that up. Did you see what hit the news with the, the Big Mac guy? No. Mm. You guys, that hit the news this, this weekend. What's the Big Mac guy? He just hit uh, since 1972. 
He's been eating uh, uh, at least two Big Macs a day, every single day. 30,000 Big Macs he's consumed. Holy How old is he? Uh, let's see here. Is the article on him real quick here. He's 140. We no, he's, examine his uh, gut after he, he's done. He's, he's an interesting looking character. I don't know. He looks like he's in his uh, late 50s or so, I'd say. Now, you know, it, you know somebody's going to be like, see? Ugh. See, you can eat that way and be happy. I want him to get a, a colonoscopy. He, he says, I'm trying to get to 40,000. That'll take me another 14 years. <laughs> what a goal. Dude. Yeah. Oh, there's his name right there. There he is. Uh, he's a, Oh, he's a world record hold, holder. His name is David Gorski. What a cool record. Oh, so he's an active. Yeah. I, I wonder if he gets free Big Macs now. Hmm. What a great scheme! Yeah, you know yeah. how, how much? He's bullshit, the new Jared. How much bullshit is it if he doesn't get free Big Macs? I, don't know, <laughs> right? say, I bought thirty thousand of these motherfuckers. Kick me some free ones, right? <laughs> you yeah. gotta, th- you gotta think he's not normal. If you're eating two, one to two of them every day, I just want to go obsessive compulsive. I just want to go on record saying though the 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 fakest worst burger that tastes the best is a Big Mac, in my opinion. Do you? When's the last time you guys have had a Big Mac? Oh my god, at least five years. I, could, I never liked uh, McDonald's burgers. I've never been a fan Ever. of Big Mac. I, never I loved Big Mac. I was like more prone too much to bread. Carl's Jr. It is or, a lot. Uh, of, it is a lot of bread. Yeah, yeah. It's Carl too Jr. much bread and Big you know, Mac. It's got the fucking thousand so island that's dressing. A gra- that's a great point. Now, and this is crazy how much that shifted yeah, as I got older. Like now, I I want a meaty burger with mm-hmm. light a light bun. As a kid, I wanted all the the carbs. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I used to eat a Big Mac with a you know two orders of fries or something because I want I loved all the carbs. Where that's, I'm totally opposite now. If I go to get a burger, I'll get no fries and two big old M- McDonald's burgers. Just taste uh, processed and engineered. Oh, they do. Yeah. They I do. mean, they're they good so, since day. That's one. why they're so good though. That's they, why they, they, they taste, hijack their yeah. fries so, uh, are the only thing that I could see people like. Oh wow, they, did you, you have the best fries. They have the best fries. There's a secret to that, right? What, didn't we talk about they, this? I don't know. They spent a lot of money on. No, the fries yeah. There's a, there's a secret to the what they what they do with the fries. There's also something they do to. They the, made a deal with the, the devil. The cokes. <laughs> yeah. They 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 inject like more syrup into their coke and stuff. Do too. they really? Yeah, they have a couple little tricks they do that's. Pretty gangster. But All I know is their shakes <clears throat> when you let them melt. Ew, that, it's like snot. What? Yeah, like you know. Oh, that, that's because they use the mix. It's so. Gross. I watched that on that in, that documentary. Uh, yeah, that documentary. Uh, that the movie, movie, the founder. The founder. Yeah, it's just like a oh, powder. Really? It's just a powder. It's not even. Oh, like real, that, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's not even it like, turns into this like weird gelatinous like it's, snot. It's not even real ice cream. I used uh, to love that too. I know. The Big Mac. You know what I used to eat was the double quarter pounder with cheese. If I went to McDonald's, that was the burger that I had. Really? Because it was more burger. I would eat the chicken nuggets. I was that guy. Two, you, were that, you were that kid? Yeah, I was like, All you eat is chicken nuggets? Just the chicken nuggets, dude. <laughs> Remember those commercial kid? with the little like, chicken nuggets? So, uh, for, I, chicken nu- for picky shit. kids, yeah. if, for picky eaters, yeah. chicken nuggets is like that's the That's a fucking, home run. Yeah, that's the remedy. Always. Did you guys ever see that, <laughs> that special? Doug, did you see the special? I bet you've seen that. The Jamie... God, what's his last name? Jamie something. He was a uh, he was a uh, he went across America like health food stuff, and his his big thing he was addressing with the chicken. All nugget. right, Jamie. Fuck, what's his last name? He does this thing. If you do this, Google uh, Jamie chicken nuggets. I guarantee he'll pop up. So this ruined it forever for me. This came on TV. I don't remember how Is long. This where ago. he showed how they're made. Oh, yes. God, don't tell me. He yeah. had a he had Ugh. a group of kids. He had a group of kids sitting in front of him, and he. <clears throat> He started making up some chicken, right? And he wanted to show these kids how they were made. And then he wanted to ask how many of these Jamie kids. Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver. There it is. And he makes these chicken nuggets. When was this? When did this air? How long ago was it? I don't remember when the first, when the show or Well, this is 2010. That was. So it's at least it's at least eight years or, ago that I see it. But this like forever ruined chicken nuggets for me. Like I'll never touch a chicken nugget after watching this. And what? That's the, that's the exact scene right there. Wow, you found it, Doug. Good job. He cho- he chops it all up, right? And then you see him like blend it and grind up all the bone all the bone and cartilage and that's yeah. what really makes this nugget and then he deep fries it. Now the crazy part is the kids are watching this right now. So if you could see this, so if you if you guys google Jamie Oliver shows kids chicken nuggets, uh it's a it's a crazy video to watch. What I found the most fascinating about this video is the kids are getting disgusted by it when they see actually how he makes the chicken nuggets. Right now, he's going to start to cut up all the cartilage and the yeah. bone and stuff, and then blend it. And the kids are like, "Oh, they're gross." Then when it's all complete, he's like, well, "You guys want some of these?" They all wanted it. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought that, of course. I thought that was really fascinating. Like, yeah. Yeah. Look at yeah. see, they're all grossed out by the cartilage and everything, and then they then he blends it all together, yeah, deep it in. deep fries it, and the kids Just are like, pours yeah. it in like, mm, and fries it. No, yeah. I never liked their bur- their burgers that much. I like their fries. I like their, their well. Meat. At least you're getting like organ meat, right? Y- yeah. I mean, and hey, like, and like bone. Yeah. And- 
That's true. But they add more than just the, than just that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's There's the more thing. than just chicken like, in there. Like rats. There's other stuff in there to yeah. keep like it. Like rats. <laughs> wow, don't, uh, not dude. that far. Don't get us sued by fucking McDonald's. I'm just saying. <laughs> I heard things. <laughs> yeah. I heard things. Oh my god, you're in trouble. Where, when so you had you had one five years ago. When's the last time you had McDonald's? I don't even know. It may man. be long. I, it may I be longer. I avoided that specific. I don't know. I'm just like it. I would say I'd have Wendy's. Like probably the, the last time I had fast food it was probably Ugh. Wendy's. Yeah, they put fingers in people's food. No, oh, oh that? that's a <laughs> bullshit. That lady, <laughs> like in the, in the chili. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she put a, yeah a, a finger in chili. Was it her own or <laughs> I think so? Something like that. And then she so sued ridiculous. Them. Yeah, you guys put a finger in. That's your finger, bitch. Yeah, it's your own finger. If you're gonna put a finger in, in your chili and try and sue a company, use another finger. Yeah, it's so easy for them to figure out it's yours. Yeah. What? Yeah. What is everyone's last? What is the so yours was Wendy's. I would have to say mine was probably McDonald's probably five years ago or so. And I remember the day I actually went, you know, it's funny. I went and bought two Big Macs and a, a fry and then came back and watched 16 and Pregnant. Boy, was I not feeling good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You were depressed. I was day. sick. No, I was coming off being sick. Did you get yeah. the, did you, did you if get only instant? somebody to give you a hug. You wouldn't have gone through all those steps. You know what I mean? I just needed a hug, dude. Did you have instant diarrhea? Uh, no, I don't think I did actually because I think I was so, I was, uh, I was sick for like two or three. You know when you have, sometimes when you get out of a flu, you come out of a flu, you kind of crave that like greasy, nasty food. You don't crave like calories. A, you just want yeah, mm. and you, exactly. And so I, I was after being sick, having the flu for a couple of days. It was like the last day that I was staying home from work, and uh, I was like, oh, you know what? I haven't had a Big Mac in years. Man, I'm a grown up. I'm gonna go do this. And I drove down and. Got myself two Big Macs like, fries, came back, watched the toy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 do you want yeah. the toy? <laughs> the last thing I ate was probably Carl's Jr. That's if I had to pick like one Oh, of I major, wish that was my last one. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. You chain. know what's gonna happen now yeah. that we're talking about this? Someone's gonna make a run at some point. I know. No way. Trips. You know it's crazy. Double now, Western bacon cheese. I have done it okay, so five years ago was probably about the last time I had it. About Seven or eight years ago was when I stopped ever having it in my diet. And then, of course, I had the few times of, let me try this. I haven't had it in a long time. And I've been show oh, enough wow. times I've had been torn up in my gut from it mm -hmm. that it does, I might don't even want it anymore. You know what's funny, though? I don't can, even. I can imagine the taste of McDonald's, and I can also imagine the taste of Taco Bell. And both of those I haven't had for <laughs> probably Bell. 10 years. But yeah. I can still picture, I can still feel the taste of. Of like Taco Bell bean that used burrito to be a and, go to yeah like a bean burrito and a, like a soft taco oh dude you not know, even like realizing like it wasn't even any like nutrients in there. you want to talk about if you're bulking when I was a kid when I was bulking if I had a little bit of money the amount of food I could get go to Taco Bell oh yeah because so I spend twenty bucks there and I'd have like a tray of so much food and I'd yeah. crush it all yeah yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I have gut issues now. It's weird. It's <laughs> yeah, so strange. I wonder, I wonder where that came yeah, from. I wonder what happened. <laughs> yeah. Weird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from T Fluit. The ketogenic diet seems to be excellent for mental function and longevity, but what about performance? <clears throat> As a men's physique athlete, I love the weight loss of keto, but is it possible to perform and grow without glucose as a fuel and glycogen depleted muscle. Sure, sure, yeah. it's, sure, it is. But you know what? It's speaking of the fads. It's fad, not ideal. No. Speaking of the fads, I mean, and here's another fucking fad. This this keto fad is getting ridiculous. Keto fasting and CBD are annoying me this year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well, they're just I'm annoyed. They're so hot right now. You know why? Like because too much. when anything, anytime something has merit, that's what they do. They yeah. they 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 pour it out. That's the hard part about it. Is it does have merit. Yep. I have a lot of good things to say about all three of those things. In fact, yeah. we've talked about it on the show, but it's inevitable. We take some shit like that and then it's we like, How can we make money bro, off all these things? Here's how you know keto has gone. It's just gone too mainstream. Um so I started watching the the Jersey Shore reunion. Which is oh a, my God. if you're a Jersey Shore fan, yeah. you will like it. It yeah. is a shit show. And they, I was a big fan of the Jersey Shore. They look amazing now. Oh, they my got older, right? God. Yeah. They look amazing. The, Botox Snooki, and drugs going on. Snooki and Jay look exactly what you thought. Yes. You know, like so uh, that, that time frame would look like. Oh, Mike, the situation has now changed his name to, what was his name? The Contribution. 
I think his name was or something like that. He the changed contribution. his name. What? Because I don't remember what it was. He changed it because he's he's like not doing drugs anymore. Yeah. Uh, except now he's fat because all he does is eat. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, great show. So it's a uh, different situation. Vinny, you guys remember Vinny yeah. on the Jersey Shore? Yeah, yeah. Vinny's sh- he's like lean now. The most normal guy out of yeah, all. Yeah, right. he's no now he was he parties hard on there too. So he's really lean now, and the reason why he's lean is he does keto. So so uh, and now that oh great, you know oh, what Paulie D calls him? What his nickname is? No, <laughs> the keto Guido. <laughs> the keto <laughs> Guido. <laughs> that was dumb. brilliant. But that's how you know keto's gone too mainstream. Oh, no. is what it's on the Jersey Shore. Yeah. I, everywhere I go, I hear it now. I hear I hear yeah. people, and you know, I just I stay out of these conversations. You know, when I'm at, I was at a barbecue and I'm listening to people. Oh, you ketogenic, and oh no, I'm I'm doing the intermittent fasting diet right now, and I'm just here. I'm like, oh god, yeah. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. So so there's a couple misconceptions here. First off, glycogen depleted muscles. You do deplete your body of glycogen, but they've actually found that muscles actually. Uh, hold on to a decent amount of glycogen even when you're in keto. They uh, will they, and you actually by going keto, you train the body to hold on to more. Mm-hmm. One of the things that uh, was really difficult for me when I was competing early on was keeping my muscle bellies filled up because I was shuttling. I had trained my body and <clears throat> my body had got adapted to consuming 400 to 600 grams of carbohydrates. Therefore, I would watch the, I would watch my muscles deplete over hours. It'd be the craziest thing ever. So if inflate I inflate and deflate, yeah, it would inflate and deflate, and I was constantly trying to like find just the right amount to inflate them up so I looked filled out. Uh, when I stopped eating so much carbohydrates, it became much easier to control that. So there's some real big benefits yeah. to going keto like that and then reintroducing carbohydrates. Yeah, yeah. Now, as as far as mental function, function, first off, longevity. There's a lot of different ways to eat for uh, long term health. Ketogenic diet seems to be good for that for for some people. I think in in modern Western life uh, lifestyle, a ketogenic diet seems to be excellent for longevity. Not necessarily because it's the ketogenic diet that's great, but more so because people who grow up in you know like the standard American diet, when they eliminate all those carbohydrates, bump up their healthy fats they see a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And I do think that a lot of people just, their bodies have a, uh, have a tough time utilizing uh, sugar. I think that there's a lot more people that have insulin issues than they realize. Yeah. So then when they go keto and their mitochondria are now functioning a little faster, everybody's like, wow, I feel so much better. Here's the biggest problem mm-hmm. I have. oversaturated. The biggest problem that I have with the ketogenic diet is that a major- now that it's gone mainstream, a majority of people are like this, like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm keto, or at least I try to be keto at least four or five days out of the week, you know, and very few people have the discipline to follow any sort of diet, you know, consistently and strict. And the ketogenic diet is arguably one of the hardest diets to follow consistently and strict. And it may, I would argue that it could potentially have the most detriment because if you're a, if you are already a classic yo-yo dieter or the binge and purge type of mentality when it comes to eating, somebody who goes keto for two weeks and then falls off and then goes keto and then falls off, boy, you can't. If you've been eating ketogenic for a long time, you will change your body's need now for for carbohydrates. It's different. Well, well, the other thing, most people I talk to that say they're on a ketogenic diet are like basically doing a carnivore diet, and that's it. Literally, it, maybe it's like they're adding butter to their coffee, but then they're. You know, I'm like, okay, so what do your meals look like? It's like they're eating steaks, they're eating eggs, they're eating like everything they mention has like protein mm-hmm. and tons of, pro- and they don't even realize like, you know, it's it like a true ketogenic diet. Like we're trying to get as much just fat, you know, just fat yeah. as we can. Yeah, it's, it's very challenging. Ketogenic diets definitely low carb, but not all low carb diets are technically ketogenic diets. So now, and, and when I talk about ketogenic diets, I'm talking about the medical application uh, and what they typically are, what they're supposed to look like, which is mostly fat, moderate protein, and extremely low carbohydrate. Now, can you be in ketosis and eat a ton of protein? You can. I think it makes it a little bit more difficult, but there's some studies now showing that it might not be as, as big of a deal as we thought it was. But I think you're right. Justin, because people take the approach, and here's the other thing too with keto that I get upset with, is that people think that just eliminating carbs and eating a lot of fat and not looking at food quality, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just going to eat a lot of fat and, and they end up eating a lot of fried 
you know, fried foods. They're they're picking lots of vegetable oils. Yeah, it's like vegans who stop eating certain things and then they also need a ton more processed shit. Yeah, and vegetables fake and tofu, fri- all yeah, this stuff. Or, like or French right. fries and potato chips. Right, right. Yeah, so now here's the thing. Do you notice a mental an improvement in mental function when you go ketogenic? Oh, yeah. Most people yeah, do. Sure. I do. Not all people do, but most people do. I get very sharp. So for me, when I do my forty eight hour very fast, it, yeah, I, I go <laughs> if yeah. if that's even possible, he gets very sharp. Yeah. Like, not just like razor. <laughs> yeah. It's like, super sharp. Like think of the most sharp. That's me. <laughs> it's sharper than that. Yeah. Right. So so I I, I do a, a fast every month. After the fast, I go hardcore keto for about a week and I always notice I'm much faster with my words. I can think you know, quicker. I've got better verbal no, fluency. I notice yeah. I notice a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. It was always. one of the things here's the, I mean I, I love all of these diets for people to try out. Like I think that when I was coaching clients, I used to teach all of it. I, I would tell a client like, hey, let's let's be vegan for a month. Let's run that. Let's see how your body responds and let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Let's let's eat and let's let's have discussion around is this an easy diet for you to follow? How do you feel? How are you sleeping? How's your skin? How's your sex? How are these things? Okay, cool. Now I want to flip that on its head. Like you just did that. Let's run ketogenic for a while. Let's yeah. talk about how you feel. And then let me help you connect the mm-hmm. dots to the reason why you're feeling that way. And it has nothing to do yeah. with the name of this made up fucking diet. You're yeah. just readjusting the focus. So, right. hey, the focus this time, we're going to we'll focus on just consuming fats and then, you know, running off of ketones. So your body has a chance to operate in another mm-hmm. operating system. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that even feel like? Why don't you go through that and, and challenge yourself or, you know, go through an intermittent fast protocol and like, you know, refrain from food, see what that does, you know, as far as, as the social aspects of food in general, like, and what that's going to do for you, you know, moving forward. And then vegan, like you said, adding more, you know, vegetables, that might, may be the most impactful thing that you got from it um but yeah i think i think it's just that that's not where you stay like I, that mm-hmm. this dieting thing like it, it, i just i have a hard time believing that eating one way for for then on out is gonna do all that well for you no i don't i don't think so I, you know each viable way of eating has tends you'll find it tends to have pluses and minuses for you so for me when i go keto improved mental function, consistent energy throughout the day. Not necessarily more energy, but I have less dips throughout the day. I tend to get a little leaner, but here's some of the negatives. My strength tends to decrease. So Mm -hmm. uh, I do lose some strength. I do lose some power. I don't get as good of pumps uh, when I work out in the gym. If you're trying to build muscle and improve athletic performance, ketogenic diet, except for maybe steady state, long duration, low intensity type cardio activity, I don't think keto is great. Like if I if I wanted to be as strong as possible and build as much muscle as possible, I would throw in some starches for mm-hmm. sure. I don't need a net of a, a ton of them, but I would de- definitely throw them in. That's so, what's, that's what's awesome is if you if you've been on both sides of this. Where exactly, we, you have your tools, right? Yes, yeah. like I do this all the time. Like I I don't follow a structured diet whatsoever, but there's definitely days you could say like I mean just over the weekend I ate very much so ketogenic. I mean it was pretty. Now was there a reason? Did you that you're like okay this is why I'm applying? Keto. Nah, not really. It was I knew I wasn't going to be training that day. We were at a barbecue where I knew there was going to be a bunch of meat and stuff being served. I wasn't moving or exercising very much. Don't need a lot of carbohydrates that day. Hey, I'll just lower my inflammation a little bit. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I'm like, if now I can enjoy, I got to enjoy some like sausage and ribeye and some things that were a little bit higher in fat and calories. And so I'm going to pull back on the carbohydrates. And then today's Monday. So guess what? I'm, I mean, Katrina's on her way over here right now with a nice chicken and rice and sweet potato bowl. So I'm going to get, shuttle some carbs into me. And in about two hours, I'll be lifting and I'm going to use it. And I'm going to, and my, and it was great is because I've, I've now trained my body to get used to a much lower carbohydrate intake. Man, them 50 to 80 grams of carbs I'm about to consume, I'm going to feel great. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. going to feel great in that workout. I'm going to use all of it, and then afterwards, maybe I'll have another meal that has some carbs and meat, and then the rest of the night, I'll probably go all meat. Here's how I use the ketogenic diet. I use it for uh, if we're going to do like a long stretch of podcasts with other people, then I'll typically go keto because it keeps me sharper on the podcast. Um, if I know we're going to do something very physical or if I want it to appear more muscular, then I'll throw in some more carbohydrates and get a little bit more. Love that strategy. More pumped up. If my gut is off, 
then I tend to go more ketogenic because or, <laughs> or fast, or yeah. fast, yes, go starve or fasting, or yeah. or fasting. If I'm not very active and I'm at home and we're just relaxing, that's when I may go more veganish, where I'm not having any animal proteins at all. It's mostly vegetables and and you know vegetable fats or or the good ones like coconut oil, olive oil. I like to go elvish. Next question is from Miranda Odell. Difference in weighted glute bridges or weighted hip thrusts in developing all three parts of the glutes. So a, a glute bridge and a, a hip thrust are the same thing. Yeah. That's right? what I. That's what I was. I'm like, what's um, the difference? Yeah. So I think, uh, and I'll we'll try and address this a couple different ways. So one, I think that I know Doug had to change the wording around because I don't think he understood the question. But I think she was one trying to ask us the three parts of the glutes or like the different parts of your glute. Right. Um, and then I also think wondering what, like what is the difference between all these glute exercises? Um, a couple points I want, I want to make one. Uh, I see this a lot with the band distraction now. And ever since Brett Contreras and the hip thrust, it's just, I see him in the gym like crazy and everybody's thrusting away. Um, I'm super pro that when I see somebody uh, using the thrust with some weight, because I think that's great. I think it's a great way to build some strength, and I think it's a great way to build the glutes. Um, but really uh, targeting different parts of of your glute, uh, the bridge and the thrust are, are going to be pretty much the same unless you start to uh, manipulate your position of your feet, mm -hmm. right? So if you start to really externally rotate your, your feet, you're going to see your your glute meat. And really that's just because you're rotating the femur out and then having to keep that out while you're also thrusting. And so you can target more of different parts of your glutes. But I also think that I see a lot of these band distractions and kickbacks and donkeys and all these things. And girls are pumping reps out like crazy. Or the other one that drives me fucking crazy is the uh, weighted, uh, weighted, uh, or assisted uh, pull-up machine, oh, yeah. and the and the girls oh, they push it down with their yeah, leg. and they're pushing it, pushing it down with their leg. Like, yeah, good luck building an ass doing that. You know, just because you feel your well, you ass look like an ass, right? Yeah, so, good luck. I mean, it, going for you. if you if you just because you feel a burn somewhere because you're you're working or moving a muscle, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to develop or build that to be a big strong muscle. You know, no. that's. Now you have three parts of the glutes: the the, the maximus, which is the obviously the big part of the cheek. That's, that's like the, the rump. Yeah, that's like the the lower part of it. You have the medius, which is up at the top, um, and then the minimus, which is kind of near the sides. And the, you know those work with the, like what's called the hip abduction. So legs come apart. You're going to get a lot of activation in the min, uh, you know minimus and, and medius. Mm -hmm. And the maximus is the one that kicks the leg back or, or kicks it down. Bridges, I just, by the way, for the first time in my life, have incorporated weighted hip thrusts into my routine. I've done them before, mm -hmm. but it's now actually a part of my routine. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh. And it is a skill, uh, like any other exercise. So because I've never done it before, I'm starting real light. I haven't gone over like 200 pounds yet. I've only done it twice. And it definitely hits the, the glutes differently than uh, you know squats or deadlifts. And I'll let you guys know what kind of carryover I get. Now, I'm assuming I'm going to get a lot of carryover because it's a skill that I've never focused on before. And although I'm using a weight that right now I feel like is enough for me because I'm trying to practice it, I can tell that I can get a lot stronger. I feel like I'll be able to get up to 300 pounds or, or more on doing this, and I'll let you guys know what happens. But you definitely feel a different part uh, – not a different part of the glute, but – It's just isolated. Well, here's what it's it is. Isolated. When you look at the way gravity yep. is pulling down on the weight and the muscle that's directly underneath it when it's you're thrusting, it's right still there. a compound movement because you're still it's using still, the knees a little still, bit. It's still a compound. It's very, it's, very weak on all the other muscles. Yeah, it's close. In my opinion, it's one of the the uh, closest thing to isolating the glutes with a a strong lift. If that makes sense, sure. right? Right. Like you like to to isolate the glutes, like your your position, From like a bilateral type of a movement yes. versus because for me, like I immediately think to go into unilateral movements, like a like a uh, Bulgarian split squat or something like that to really help. Here's um, you know enhance the glutes. Well, here's where I get here's where you get more out of the or different out of the hip thrust. All the resistance is very high at the top of the movement when your glutes are fully contracted. You don't get that with any other heavy compound glute movement. So not, not necessarily that it's superior right. because I think 
It's changing the strength curve. It's yeah. So like so when, a, when when you do a barbell squat, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. most of the tension on your glutes bottom. is at the bottom. Right. right. So it's in that stretch position. Yeah. With a bridge, it's a lot of it's at the very top. Which, which actually speaks to the point that we talked about with Pukolski. That's right. That I think is really unique and right. So if you are a female who is trying to, and it could be a male too. So a male or female who's trying to develop your glutes. I think there is a lot of value in the glute bridge. Mm-hmm. If you're somebody who's not, if you're a guy and you think your glutes are fine and you're not really focused on them, I think it's a waste of time. I don't think it's a, a and I know Brett Contreras would probably argue with me all day long about that, but if you're a guy who doesn't care about developing the, your butt that much, it's not a, a a staple. The amount of work that it takes <laughs> to put all those weights on, like I see some of these it's guys- hard to get unless you're doing it. some serious bedroom stuff. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, when else are you going to be doing that? Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just, again, I'm always the guy who's trying to do as little as possible to listen to the most amount of change. And I know how long it takes to set that up. Like to set up for- it's, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking horde. It's 20, 30 minutes to set up a hip thrust. I'm like, dude, I could have done Bulgarian squats, front the squats, or back squats ass. by yeah. the time I get fucking yeah. one setup for some heavy ass hip thrusts. And it's like, and on top of that, I'm not- a, Now, if I was training a girl who- if my, that was her target. My girl, my girl does these, okay? So when we work out together and we train, my girl does hip thrusts all day long in here. So I'm, I'm not- <laughs> All day long. Yeah. I'm not yeah. anti, yeah. anti like, hip Adam, thrust. Can, what's my workout look like today? <laughs> uh, one exercise, 15 well, sets. Right. Hip, hip thrust all day long. But I think there's- Okay. So just so everybody knows, I just posted this on my Insta story. I'll have Jackie uh, make sure she puts the direct link. We have a free resource page on our website. One of the resources is a, an incredible article that Sal wrote. It's a, it's five thousand words, so it's very detailed about building an incredible butt, and probably a lot a lot of the mistakes that people make when trying to do that, and some of the do's and the don'ts. And so, free article, and you and go, it's at our resource page. She'll hopefully put the link right there. I just posted in my story the other day. Obviously, it'll be gone by the time this comes up, but you know, check that page out. Read up on that. And, yeah. and, and we address targeting the different parts of glutes inside that article. And for the most part, what we found, I mean, it's it, typically it's it's in the setup. It's when, you know, it, there's no communication going into that part of your body. And so how to set yourself up properly to be able to get that communication open and channeled and how to use that in your workouts will make a massive difference. On this is where I really love hip thrust. Yeah, I love hip thrust as like some uh, somewhat of a priming. Right. Priming my glutes. I've always used it that prime way. Prime it, then yeah. go into a squat. Yes. Feel it. Because a lot of people just don't don't have don't know how to get the, the glutes activated. Or when you squat, your body just goes mm-hmm. into default. And the default pattern for a lot of people is quad dominant. So they push out of the squat with their quads. What a great way to prime get the brain. To feel the butt. Yeah, feel the butt is to do some hip thrust before and then go into that. And then uh, it, gr- another great way to prime it is to, you know, if you want the glute med, which I think is one of the most neglected parts of the butt because we just, we don't tend to externally rotate our feet like that. Mm-hmm. Fuck, you want some good shit in here on, on building the glutes. When was the last time you sumo deadlifted sumo. or sumo squatted? And sumo press squat. your knees out. As yes, you do it. Yeah. sumo squat or sumo deadlift. If that ain't in your movement, like, and that's the order of operation here. And Cossack squat. To Damn. get under, to get under a, a, a squat bar and do some sumo squats or get under, grab a, a, a deadlift bar and do sumo deadlifts, uh, so much quicker and easier to do that. And the benefits that you get from that movement in, com- in comparison mm-hmm. to the hip thrust, pretty damn fucking mm-hmm. close, man, especially if you're not used to doing that. If you don't, if you always conventional deadlift or you always conventional squat, do some sumo style with the feet externally rotated and opening the knees out. Oh, man. Well, the reason why I put it in my routine now is Robert Oberst was talking about him last time we, we were hanging out with him. Mm. And he uh, uses them. Yeah, he he does. Wow. He, he said that that was a great exercise. So, you know, you hear from someone like that who competes at such a high level. And I think he just I know I think he they just he just completed right the the world's strongest man competition. Yeah, and I believe he got like like did he get ninth or seventh or something like that? He's I mean he's one of the ten top ten strongest men or strongest strongman competitors what in the is, world. What exactly did he say why he does it? Did he tell you why? I don't remember him. I don't remember comment. why. I know he, he made it, it a, cool in the gym. He made it a point to talk about those Zercher squats, which is obvious mm. uh, why, why they would do those. But So I'll let you guys know what the carryover is because I've never- it's just uh, to build volume. I've never personally used it myself like as a, in a routine on a consistent basis for me. I've done it with other clients. So if I see carryover to my squats or to my deadlifts- then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep using them, but I definitely felt different 
in that movement because I've never really done it. I, I like before. I like him for building glutes. I, I'm playing devil's advocate here with just saying that talking the shit about it because I think it's I think it's getting it's hyped again like anything else. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We now I see it all over the place and that's what everybody's doing. It's like well okay. If, if you're using just wait it, till like dudes start comparing PRs of their that's happening. Right. It's, already happening, <laughs> it's happening right now. I was it's I was gonna insta story. I was gonna uh, talk shit. It was uh, I saw Matt Ogus and or Ogus or Ogre. I can't even spell his last name. I don't know how he says it, but he, he was doing it. They've been going back and forth with it, and uh, I, we don't have a relationship yet, so I didn't want to throw a jab and then him take it the wrong way. Like I'm really picking on him. It's like so I didn't do any. I actually ha- I, hashtag no one cares. Well, that's it was actually Sorry. gonna be something like yeah, that. I was just yeah. like nah, not very cool, you know. But yeah, whatever, not. You, not no very, bragging rights. Yeah, 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 not very cool, dude. So, yeah. but whatever. You know, I think it's a it's it's a tool like anything else. If you're a grappler, that's an exercise for sure. That you, I could see some big benefit, especially if you're in a jujitsu. Oh, it's or like somebody. thrusting someone off oh. of you. Well, you bridging uh, okay. is bridging is a staple movement oh, in, in all grappling. Yeah, all grappling, yeah. especially wrestling, because you don't want to get pinned. Oh, that's a good right. point. I so, could see that. That's a I could see a lot. Of we value. practiced a lot of bridging when I did jujitsu. We did a lot of bridging, not not with weight, but we would bridge and practice rolling over our shoulder and. Sure. Bridging with opponents on you because you never want to be flat on your back in no. jujitsu. You want to be able to move your hips out to the side, learn rigid how to bridge. like a board. And, and with wrestling, same thing. So there's a very functional movement for grappling sports. Um, I've seen some some you know literature showing that it can contribute to sprint speed and all that stuff. But in comparison to squats, I don't know if there's really a comparison. But I'll let you guys know if I see some carryover. So far, so good. So far, I've done it twice, and I think I like it. Do you feel stupid doing it though? No, it's in my garage, so nobody can see. Okay, yeah. Yeah. how's the setup? In how's the setup? Pain in the ass. Yeah, I put my bench up against the wall. Safe. I got to get under the barbell, roll it up to my body, lift yeah. it up. It's hurts little- on your it hurts on your fucking pelvis. It, it, that's the thing that I had. That's I'm the, gonna get the noodle. Doesn't know we have a noodle here. We do. We have two of them. So okay. you can take one. I'll home. take one and put yeah. it. Noodle. Make sure you make sure you make sure you find. I think one is up. You gotta go get that because I fell off the ladder last time. Oh, it's man. up on the you know the bathtub thing that we did. Yeah. The other one is up there. Oh, man. So leave one here because my girl uses the one here. So don't steal that one for your gar- home garage because I know she wants it. I'll just it. order a noodle. Myself. No, we have. you. Then get up on the ladder and just get the other one? I don't want to get up there. <laughs> it's cur- <laughs> we have it's a cursed. new ladder. He's seen what happens. Oh, that's right. We have a taller ladder now. Mm. That would have helped, Doug. <laughs> Next question is from Sagan Sanders. I turned 29 yesterday. If each of you had one thing to say about turning 30, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you guys yeah. remember your thirtieth? Say goodbye. To- what did you guys do for your thirty? Oh, I don't mm. remember what I did. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I had a family over and stuff. Wasn't that that big of a deal? You know, this is an interesting question. I feel like the thirties is, is is like the twenties were back in the day. You know what I mean? Mm. Like back, like a long time ago, thirty was like you were like you should have a house. You yeah, need to have your family you're established. Now it's like when you turn thirty, then you start thinking about those things. Not that you're there, but it's almost like oh, now I got to start <laughs> thinking about. Right. So I don't know. I you know I don't know what I would say to somebody turning thirty. Other than, you know, here's something I could say. The dirty start 30. start taking your start start looking at taking investments seriously. That would mm. be a good one. If you start now and you get smart about investing your money, you don't need a lot of money, by the way. But figure out how to invest your money. Invest a little bit uh, of your paycheck every single month that you get paid, and you do that at thirty. By the time you're fifty, you should be pretty well off you'd be doing pretty well i think the big realization that i had when i turned 30 was and i think we would all say this about each other that we're all pretty self-aware guys right i think at turning 30 i think i was really just truly figuring out who i was Mm -hmm. and i think you have you you got to be really open-minded thinking because if you would have told me at 27, I would have argued with you, right? At 27, I would have been like, I know what I fucking want. I know what I what need. I think you think you know what you want and need in your 20s, but I really think that's when you're figuring all that out is yeah. piecing together like what really what really motivates you know me? What really makes me happy? What what am I looking for in a life partner? What are the what why what is my purpose behind all this and if i did achieve with these things that i think i want so bad would it fulfill me the way i think it so a lot of that's happening and i think in my in my tw- or for me in my 20s and then in in my 30s i think i've become uh, i'm the most comfortable in my own skin at 30 than i than i was in in my 20s yeah, yeah. yeah. i th- i felt like i could take everything on you know through my 20s like it was just this this ability, I would just motor through everything and everything was just going to work out. And I think once I got to 30, that's where like you, uh, yeah, you have this like moment where you sort of reassess how everything has been working for you. 
and 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 you you reflect a lot. I think uh, once you get to to thirty, where it's like, you know, uh, you might start seeing some signs of I have like new aches, pains, or, or you know, some of the things I've been doing forever just really aren't working for me. Or you know, maybe I'm not like on that career path I thought I was going to be. Or um, you know, what what am I actually going to do with this this degree? Or or you know, it's a you almost have like this this moment where you have to kind of, yeah, like figure things out, like specifically how to do the next leg. You know what pissed me off that the, the, the pain thing that you said, because that was something that really stung me that I remember people telling me when I was like in my mid twenties as a trainer and they'd be like, Oh, wait till you hit your thirties. You're going to feel this and that. And, and I remember like having this chip on my shoulder all through my twenties being like, Fuck that. I'm a fitness guy. I'm a trainer. I stay in shape. Like, I know the body. It's not going to affect me. No, I am not. I can defy the laws of I used to. Well, I used to always (laughs) tell people, I'm like, you're you're only as old as you feel because of how you take care of yourself. And I plan to take great- A lot of truth in that, though. There is. And and, and that's why I really believe it. You're not going to bounce back like you used to. Right. That's one. But I do know that- being in my 30s now and and seeing these, what what it is, is you, you start to pick up these- these habits, or you start to notice things that you did. And I, I'm, you know, on this note, I'm really, really interested to see what our kids look like in the next five to 10 years, just five to 10 years with, in, with this iPhone generation. Because I just noticed just recently, I, I went through the whole testosterone thing, injuring myself. So in the last probably five, six years, that was probably the longest stint that I had kind of not used the gym. I was not, I was, wasn't working out for about three months there. And I tell you what, in three months time, you know, and continuing doing my daily stuff, which what we have to do for work, which is sitting on a computer and a phone every now and then, uh, I have noticed my forward head like excessively come forward in three months time. So, and I'm aware, like I notice that shit and I'm trying to do little things to combat it. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking myself, whoa, what is, what are these kids that are 12, 15 years old? They're all going to look like brine shrimp. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I'm telling you, remember I fucking said this on this show Probably. right now. This is going to be a very hot topic in five to 10 years. Oh, back, back pain is, there are already statistics already coming out showing that kids are having Neck and back pain at unprecedented levels from yeah. all that. And so I think that in 30, you really start to kind of see all this, especially if you ended up getting a desk job or you're in a car a lot or you fly in a plane a lot. You start to notice these things that you've you've been forced to do in this job that you're doing now for the last 5, 10, 15 years. And in th- 30s come around and it starts to let you know that it's there. Mm-hmm. And that's really the getting what people say, oh, you're getting older. Well, it's not an older thing. It's that, hey, for now the last 10 years, I've been huddled over a computer. You know, I wasn't doing that. As a kid, I was spending more time swimming in a pool and playing basketball outside where your priorities have shifted. And because your priorities have shifted, there's always a cause and effect, right, with something like this. And that's the effect that I'm getting from being at a desk and a phone all day. I've been, I've been watching my my cousins because I have younger... There's, there's a lot of male cousins in my family. There's a, there's a lot of us. And there's my generation, and we're all in our late 30s. And then there's this the second generation who's now in their early 30s. So they're either 30 or 31 or 32. And I'm watching all these guys, and they're great guys, great kids. Everybody has got you know good families or whatever. But it's funny when I'm I see how they date now. It's very different. Like in their 20s, it was all about just sleeping with girls, going out, partying, meeting as many people as I can. Now they're they're doing that way less, and when we talk about it, they're like, you know, I don't really care about doing all that. I, I want to meet someone really cool or whatever. And you can see the guys now are starting to like, they want to meet someone that's a little, that's going to give, not necessarily like to get married, but just they want more out of a because relationship. Because how, how accessible it is. Yeah. I, it's because how accessible. The market has changed. Yes. Well, and also, also, here's the other thing I think that I had a conversation with them about this. I said, because uh, who is it? It was my cousin. He was talking about, he's like, man, he goes, when I go out now, he goes, I get hit on by girls a lot. He goes, that used to never happen to me. And I looked at him like, because you're, you're a little older now. You look a little more seasoned. <laughs> like guys don't really get attracted to like their 30s. True. <laughs> and I think maybe that's why they're all kind of looking for a little bit more because maybe it's easier for them. I don't know. I think mm. it's more accessible because of the tools that we they that have too. at their disposal. Yeah. I mean, it's just now you could be a... 25 year old and drop into a city you know zero about no nobody whatsoever turn on, Tinder. turn on yeah bumble tender all the other you're gonna get fun. some ass 
Well, not even if you're just getting out, like to meet other people and go on a date. Like it mm. was, I mean, think about that. Think about 20 years ago, dropping into a city. You've never, Austin, we drop into Austin. We're there to party for a week. You have to go out by yourself. Yeah. You, you got to go out and you got to go, you guys, and you, you got to figure out where all the places are. Then you go there. Then you talk to 10 people to find out most of them are just there to dance with their girls. They have, they already have men at home. They don't have any intention. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You strike out all night. That could easily be a night where now with the, these apps, not only can I figure out where all the single women are, but I can find the ones that match my personality right. you know like oh she's into the things i am i can yeah before you go out yeah that's what? crazy yeah, like that so it's no be- more adventure in it it's easy yeah, yeah. it's you know it's like it's like uh if you were fishing and it's the difference between going out in the ocean yes. and fishing besides going in a pond that they or stock. Going to like a trout farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah a trout yeah. farm where you can see the fish <laughs> swimming around everywhere. It's about a 10 by 10 oh, pole. lazy fuckers right. could fishing you, at the trout farm. How lame would that be after a while? After a while, yeah. you cast your pole and you know you're going to catch a fish every goddamn time. Yeah. That's not uh, fun anymore. Yeah. I want that big mouth bass. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> Next up, Saris Alexander. What would be the best way to back out of endurance training without gaining a lot of weight? Mm. This is a problem a lot of people have when yeah. they when they go real hard in in consistent with endurance type training and then they back out of it. Mm. I think a lot of them gain a lot of weight. I think it's really hard if you were like a ultra marathon runner or a runner like crazy five six seven days a week mm-hmm. and you just back off the running and that's it. But if you replace and I've done this many many times with clients that are were pure runners if if you can get them to switch their mindset to lifting weights and like like lifting heavy weights and mm-hmm. training shit all the, the the extra calories that you're going to be consuming because obviously if you were running and burning a lot of manual calories before that you no longer can technically just stop that running and then still consume that without putting body fat on that's the problem is a lot of people will stop and then they'll eat the same amount right yeah. which, which you can't I, which you can't nope. unless you were Putting if you were fall like you were if you went like from somebody who never really lifted weights consistently but you ran like crazy and then you stopped running and you switched to like a maps anabolic type of program, uh, pff, I think you could eat almost the same and be okay. I really do. That'd be that'd be a good you know to, to play it safe. I, I would agree with you, Adam. But to play it safe, I I would tell someone if you're backing off your endurance, start lifting weights. You know, heavy traditional type resistance training like a maps anabolic. Cut your calories. A little bit, and mostly from the carbs. Just cut the carbs down. You don't need as much glycogen because you're not running anymore. And and then slowly let your appetite tell you how much you need to eat as you're transitioning more to resistance training. It's usually how I do it with, with, with clients that have done that. I've done this with clients because they had to. Like I've had clients come and see me, and I'm like, okay, we need to back off the, the, the endurance training because you're doing way too much. Mm-hmm. We want to speed up your metabolism. Your body's starting to adapt in a, in a bad way hormones are off or whatever. You're doing too much running. You're running 30 miles a week. Let's bring that down to 15 to start with and then throw in some resistance training. Then eventually I bring them down to like, you know, seven miles a week or something like that. So they can still get some running, yeah. but they're not doing the ridiculous amount. Well, that's where it's probably the hardest is if you have somebody who's already weight training and they're also endurance running on top of that. Like now you have a little bit more of a challenge to to keep them from not gaining weight when they reduce all that running. If you're running five miles a day plus, and then in addition to that, I already got you weight training three, mm-hmm. four times a week. Like that's that person right there, I'd have to scale about their calories. But a lot of, I mean, I've also taken, you know, runners that have, don't lift weights at all and switched them straight over to lifting and they actually end up getting to eat more. They end I've up, seen that before. Yeah, mm-hmm. because they just they start packing on the muscle because they haven't lifted any weight whatsoever, and their their metabolism starts roaring, and then then they're freaking out. Like I, I had don't, some, that yeah, like, like super responders. Mm-hmm. You know, once they actually because they yeah they've avoided resistance training for so long. It's such a new stimulus. But yeah, I think you're right about like just cutting out just you know, just shave a bit of the calorie amount off, you know, initially, if that's like a big concern of yours. Like for me, um, just kind of getting them in a different mindset a lot of times. Like I'm not super like concerned about a little bit of a weight gain uh, in the transition, but if it's like, you know, like if you're sitting around, if you're just transitioning cold turkey, you're going to gain weight, you know, oh, yeah. you're not remaining active and in, in pursuing, uh, you know, other stimulus. So yeah. really the psyche of this person is what I'd have to address. More yeah. Because right? I have no, like this, this person could be three different mindsets going into this and all three of them I'd have to approach differently. Right. I mean, if you have somebody who is, 
you know, they run because they're scared to put on weight or they're like, you know, that's a, right. That's a, that's a a little bit more of a sensitive topic that we have to talk about is how I would strategically do that. If the person just loves running and realizes that it's time for them to back off a little bit. Because you don't want that to turn into them starting themselves as a result of, you know, like they used to run and run it off. Now I'm just going to like, right. Or sometimes those clients are afraid too of, putting muscle on they i don't want to be all bulky and that's why they run like crazy because they have this obsession with this like skinny anorexic look right right. and so then you know you they could be doing the weight because they could be doing phenomenal right you switch them out from running like that and they put three four pounds on it but it's all muscle Mm -hmm. yeah and you're pumped as a trainer you're like fuck yeah we're doing great they're like you know like my shirts aren't fitting the same 20 pounds and you're just like yeah whatever you You look look, awesome right so so it the psyche going into this matters a lot on who i'm what i'm saying to them but yeah, no, if you This is a hard it's one of the biggest challenges I ever had with as a trainer is you'd get and this this doesn't need necessarily apply specifically to endurance athletes but you know I'd get people who were college like phenomenal college athletes but now they're overweight mm-hmm. or people who worked out super hard at one point and were really fit and then they stopped working out and now they're super overweight and and the problem is you get used to a certain lifestyle of eating mm-hmm. with uh, all that calorie burn that is a tough thing to switch. You're 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 so skewed at what a normal meal looks like. I had a I had a female client who, like, it was like six or seven years out of college. She'd been working. She had a kid, and she had to lose something like forty or fifty pounds. But when she was in college, she was a high level competitive swimmer. So when she so when I'm talking to her and I'm talking about her nutrition, she's like, "Well, I don't. I still eat really healthy. I eat." you know, chicken breast and vegetables. And then she's telling me what she's eating. And so I started having her weigh her food. This girl had no idea what a normal, uh, you know, a normal portion looked like. Mm-hmm. For her, a normal chicken breast was like 12 ounces. Well, that worked great when she was swimming, you know, for three hours twice a day. Dude. But I'm like, you, you know, you can't eat. That's not a normal I literally serving. went through the same process uh, coming from college football. Cause so not only did I play, I would practice in the morning. I would wait. Actually, I'd weight train in the morning, and then we go to practice. Then we play basketball, and then we'd review films and and whatever. So I'm just like, or, or and I'd work as a bartender. So I was like always on my feet and just like go 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 go. And then I was done, <laughs> and I was in. I was eating the same way I was eating. You know, just whatever. Didn't give a fuck. It's so hard for you to figure out what normal just, is. Yeah. And and then you could yeah you just realize like oh my god like wow what's happening I had to completely adjust my entire way of looking at food and and now prioritizing like moving like that was just something that I did so yep yep yeah uh, so check this out if you go to your podcast excuse me your app store on your phone you can get the Mind Pump Media podcast app uh, it's free it allows you to search for any topic within all of our almost 800 episodes that we've already put up. God, are we approaching 800 already? Close. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.